Well, uh, you know, if also you want to judge can. how this new uh, briefing strategy worked, you got need to go no farther than the Fox News of Cupertino, Daring Fireball. Where <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's 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 very very low. No, that I was, think it's exactly the, right. The, I hate to tell you, but no, 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 no. I I I I, <laughs> I, I challenge that. There were of the of, I read all five. First of all, Gruber was the only one to specify here are the, here are the names of the other people who are at that table and also linking to all of them so it was easy for someone to uh, click all the links and read all the different coverage yeah but uh, and but, they're, they're but, up to five there two or three here's very, very his good. lead let's not beat around the bush i have great news to share well that is good news yeah well uh, okay <laughs> i guess it is I good thought, news okay, I I thought thought he buries the part about but this is going to be, you know, another year or so. It's like, it's like comparing anybody to Delta Airlines. I have to say, okay, stop. <laughs> All right, that's Back mean. Up. All right, okay, good. it was mean. I admit it was a cheap no, no, shot. For me, his was the easiest to follow. A lot of them had very small articles or short articles that they were broken up a lot, and I find them really hard to follow. John's, to me at least, was very well organized and narrated, and it sort of put you at not exactly at the table with them, but in the table-ish. So who was at uh, this table? Who were the five people at the table? Uh, John Paz from BuzzFeed. Um TechCrunch was, was there. there. Yeah, TechCrunch, Matt Panzerino. TechCrunch, BuzzFeed. And Lance Olmer uh, from, Buzz, from uh, Mashable. Okay. Interesting you know, group. Um, and also, again, that, that's why that's a big part of this uh, of the story, to find out who else was at that table. Yeah. Given that all of these people weren't you, – you don't have the New York Times. You don't have the Wall Street Journal. Uh, these are clearly people, particularly uh, uh, Gruber and uh, TechCrunch. These are uh, sites that are really well positioned to talk directly to developers, directly to pro users. So clearly Apple wanted a certain uh, segment of the Mac community to hear about this. This wasn't a, this wasn't a uh, stock price saving face. This wasn't a part of the marketing push for the Mac. This was – so it really adds credibility to the idea that we really want to try to try to say that anybody who uh, is thinking of switching away from the Mac specifically because they don't think that we're supporting uh, pro Mac users, at least give us another year or so to uh, to come through on well, this and, promise we've made. And I think it's really. I, I think the griddle is getting pretty hot for Apple. I think that the the issue is I have never heard not just me <laughs> I've never heard so many pro pro uh, computer users talking about moving to a PC and trying to figure out how they're going to do that and trying to figure out what that's going to look like. I mean, to have that many people uh, concerned about moving, I mean, this is a core audience. And if you don't think that it affects Apple's overall brand, look at when they, when they switched to Final Cut and Conan O'Brien's uh, edit crew, you know, in, in protest made a whole, made fun of a Final Cut, you know, and, and that, that definitely affects the overall brand uh, for the core audience who is deeply tied into the entertainment industry to be, you know, jumping ship. Uh, Ina Fried now works for Apple. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So I, I think it's also pretty clear that Apple did not want to have to do this. Like this was not like in their plans. My guess is they started working on these a while ago, and which was kind of funny because last year there were articles about Apple abandoning the Mac. But they've been working on this new MacBook Pro and the new the new Pro upgrades to the iMac for a while. And if I had to guess, I, I'm thinking that these are delayed. Not delayed, but they're not going to be ready anywhere nearly as quickly as Apple hoped. And that sort of fed into the situation because if they could have announced this spring the new Mac Pro, the new modular Mac Pro, then a lot of these problems, they don't go away, but they don't have to have meetings like this one to sort of say, don't <laughs> worry, we have new Mac Pros on the way. It's more like, boom, here's the new Mac Pro. We know you've been waiting a while, but we think it's worth it. And when you start to find out that it's not going to be ready for a variety of reasons until next year, uh, you got to decide, are you going to keep quiet and risk exactly what Alex is talking about? People not just discussing switching to Windows, but actually switching to Windows, or are you going to step up and say, look, you know, we don't usually discuss future plans, but we have them, and, you know, we, we're not abandoning the Mac, and try to do as much damage control and perception uh, work well, as you and can. And also, they, they don't, they, <laughs> they have to be careful of not rushing it either, because then you end up with the Mac Pro, which is a, a lot of Pro users, you know, were like myself, we're pretty upset with. I mean, they took, you know, we don't want a whole bunch of USB, just USB C's. You know, there are things that, that this makes a whole lot more complicated. And if you're, you know, if you want a fast, a, a fast laptop and you're a business user, it's, it's probably great. But for pro users, it's not necessary for a, a large number of them. It wasn't great, you know. So I think yeah. it was a mixture of a false start on the on the laptop, along with no updates on the hardware uh, on the on the desktop, um, created a situation where they had to respond. So yeah, I, I apologize because I really mm. didn't do this very well. Let me give you the news because <laughs> we're analyzing <laughs> it, and I don't think I really co coherently stated the news. The news is, and I'll do it in, uh, in Gruber's order, everybody really led with the fact that Apple is going to rethink the Mac Pro uh, and come up with a new design 
It sounds suspiciously like the cheese grater, a modular design that will allow upgrades to the CPUs and the GPUs and other hardware on a regular basis. The bad news is the existing Mac Pros get a kind of a non-update update, a minor update, uh, including no USB-C, no Thunderbolt 3 relay, really no change at all to the the this, the Mac Pro uh, form factor, and it still won't support the 5K display. Uh, the other bad news is these these new Mac Pros won't be out for some reason until next year. They are going to ship new iMacs later this year with Pro configurations, but the iMac isn't uh, upgradable either. It's the uh, reason Alex said they want to get them right, and getting them right now is not as important to them as getting them I, right. At this yeah, point. I, I, really I, I, how could I, wait a minute though? Really, how come it takes that long? Because well, I think I think that they were going one direction and realized that that yeah. one direction might. So have you're been saying if you started today, it would take you to next year to come up with a redesigned Mac Pro? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I would say so. Because the, because you know, they're not you're just talking about mass just... production of hardware. I mean, and and then and then refitting refitting a factory and then you know built. I mean, they built a whole factory around this round trash can. And so now, you know, you know, having something else that they're going to have to actually produce. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, I would have been totally happy if they had left the cheese grater in place. Yeah, I'm going to call BS <laughs> you know, on and, all and of this. Because first of all, all it, it took them three years to figure Mac, out they yeah. couldn't upgrade the Mac Pro. And they only decided in the spring of 2017, oh, shoot, we realize we can't upgrade this thing. We better work on a different model. It took them that long. I call BS. I don't buy any of this. I don't think this is going to happen. They were pretty this is trying to keep those people that uh, Alex is talking about who are about to leave the fold in sustainable, you know, suspended animation for another year.